TU-144, Failed Dream of USSR. A peep into the history of the world's first supersonic transport aircraft by Untold Facts, from Morali Egitech. The Tupolev TU-144, nicknamed Konkordsky by Western observers, is a landmark of Cold War aviation, the world's first commercial supersonic transport created by the Soviet Union. Its maiden flight took place in 1968, just two months prior to the British-French Concorde. Although it reached various significant milestones, such as being the first to surpass Mach 2, it ultimately encountered many difficulties and was retired from passenger service. Considering the immense expanse of the Soviet Union, supersonic travel was regarded as economically viable, particularly for government personnel commuting between Moscow and cities in Siberia. Air travel was the sole practical option compared to lengthy week-long train journeys, and supersonic transport had the potential to greatly reduce travel durations. Although the concept of SSTs faced criticism in the West due to worries about noise and environmental impact, the Soviet Union intended to proceed with their development, primarily for its extensive Siberian and Central Asian routes. With abundant airspace available, flight paths were expected to circumvent densely populated regions. Given the geopolitical climate during the Cold War period, the Soviet Union was intent on not just matching, but surpassing Western advancements, particularly in aerospace technology. The idea of the West getting ahead and leaving the Soviet Union behind was unthinkable. The directive from Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union at that time, was clear not only prevent the West from getting ahead, but also compete fiercely, even to the extent of leapfrogging their technological advancements, if necessary. The aircraft was seen as a formidable challenge to the United States' dominance in the field of civil aviation. Designed by the Tupolev OKB under Andre and his son Alexei Tupolev, the Tu-144 aimed to demonstrate Soviet technological might and serve vast domestic routes across the USSR. It featured distinctive canards behind the cockpit to assist low-speed flight, a droop nose for landing visibility, twin afterburning turbofans, and a double delta wing. A total of 16 aircraft were built, with only nine production models entering service. While similar to the Concorde, the Tu-144 was not a direct copy. It was developed concurrently, but with its own unique design features. The Concorde ultimately enjoyed a much longer and more successful operational life. Operational range was limited, so Aerofloat used it mainly for mail and cargo. Then passengers, on the Moscow, Alma Ata route starting December 1975 for freight and November 1977 for passengers. Its cruising speed reached Mach 2.2 at 52,000 feet altitude with a crew of three in capacity for 150 passengers having a range of 6,500 kilometers and maximum service ceiling of 66,000 feet. The Tu-144's cabin was cramped and extremely noisy due to afterburner use, with reported levels of 90 to 95 dB, often requiring passengers to write notes to communicate. Lacked reverse thrust, relying on drag chutes for landing. Achieved speed ahead of Concorde largely by cutting corners in testing and rush development. During a high-speed demonstration, the Tu-144 stalled, crashed, and disintegrated over Gussenville, killing all six crew and eight civilians. Yegayevsk test crash. May 23, 1978. A fuel pipe leak caused a wing fire during tests. Two of eight crew died in a belly landing attempt. This crash prompted immediate suspension of passenger flights. Continued until 1983 for cargo and mail with a total of 102 commercial flights, 55 with passengers. From 1996 to 1999, NASA and Tupolev modified a Tu-144D into the Tu-144LL Flying Laboratory, helping research next-gen supersonic transport aerodynamics and systems. Some aircraft were later used for Boron space program training and atmospheric research. Despite its shortcomings, the Tu-144 remains a milestone in aeronautical engineering, symbolizing a high-stakes technology race. Its dramatic history, innovations, ambition, tragedy, and research roles. 
make it a poignant counterpoint to Concorde's logo of supersonic elegance. The 2144 was first in flight and first supersonic, but couldn't match Concorde's range, reliability, or comfort. Fatal crashes and high operational costs led to its early demise. Yet, it made a significant mark on aviation, inspiring further research in supersonic travel. Thanks for spending your valuable time with us. Please share and subscribe to our channel.